Thank you so much again to, to all of you for joining us this evening. I'm Yasmin Taib. I'm a lobbyist for the Friends Committee on National Legislation, which is a Quaker lobby. We're out here tonight to stand in solidarity with our Muslim refugee and immigrant brothers and sisters and to loudly proclaim that we will not stand for a Muslim ban ever. We are disappointed with the Supreme Court's decision today that would put into effect parts of this administration's unconstitutional and unconscionable Muslim and refugee ban. Trump's Muslim and refugee executive order violates our core values of religious liberty and runs counter to American values. These executive orders are unconstitutional, reprehensible, and immoral. When immigrants are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When refugees are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When Muslims are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. The United States was built by immigrants and refugees. We have a strong treasure tradition of welcoming those fleeing violence and persecution. It's a tradition my own family and I benefited from. I stand before you not only just as an advocate for refugees and immigrants, but I'm also standing here as someone who fled Iran during the Iran-Iraq war and was welcomed in America. As we've said over and over again at protests we've had after the first executive order came out in January and after the second executive order came out in March, we will be here every single day if need be to protest these discriminatory and unconstitutional and unacceptable policies. We will, we will stand with our brothers and sisters who are under attack and we will continue to fight every single day. So right now I wanted to introduce our first speaker, uh, Reverend Noel Anderson from Church World Service. Right, let me hear you say no hate, no, no, hate. hate. no fear, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. No hate, no, no, no fear. fear. Refugees are welcome here. No hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. No hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. That's right, and that's why we are all here today to say we will not stand by while all our brothers and sisters are being discriminated against by these unjust policies. As people of faith, we are called to love our neighbors, to welcome the refugees, and to all of those who face marginalization and persecution, we are called to welcome them in our country. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. All right. Now, we cannot stand by, even for a moment, while this President Trump's discriminatory refugee and Muslim ban go into effect, even temporarily. This betray betrays our values our just of justice and humanity that all of us hold true. We know this is immoral. We know this is discriminatory. We've seen it, the record of animus and discrimination against immigrants, against refugees, against Muslims, against all people of color. The, the Muslim ban doesn't just discriminate against Muslims, but anybody who wants to walk down the, the street without fear. Anybody who worries about how will they pray, how will they be discriminated against, what language they speak, what nation of origin, now, we will continue to fight. We will continue to mobilize, to organize. And this may be the highest court in the land, but we believe in a higher law. We have a higher power. And we are called to higher ground, to love and respect all people as children of God. And together, our spirit will, will never give up and we will fight on, we will walk on, we will march on until all people are welcomed. Yes sir. Yes. Woo! Me and our MC is gonna come back with us until we do that. Let me hear you say it. no ban. No, no law. 
Sanctuary for all. No ban, no wall. Sanctuary for all. No ban, no wall. Sanctuary for all. No ban, no wall. Sanctuary for all. Great. Thank you so much, Noel. So please help me welcome our next speaker from the American Civil Liberties Union, Manar Wahid. Hi. So my name is Manar Wahid. I am a proud staff member at the ACLU. You may have heard of us here or there in the news. Um, I'm also the child of immigrants, and I'm also a Muslim American. So. I'm here today because this is about our Constitution, this is about our country and our values, and it's also personal to me as an individual and as an American. So I know we, are, we all heard from the Supreme Court a little bit this morning, um, and Donald Trump came out afterwards and called it a clear victory. So there's a couple things that I want to point out um, about that quote-unquote clear victory, because that's not what it was at all. Um, one of them is, yes, there was a partial lift on the ban. The lift on the ban is very narrow. Um, the court said that the lift on the ban applies to um, people for which there is no bona fide relationship. So that is a legal term, but essentially what it means is people without a relationship to an individual in this country or an entity. So that means students can still come on visas. Um, Workers can still come when they have jobs here. Woo! Refugees yeah. can still come to our country. Woo! So who is actually, who the ban actually applies to under this new piece is very, very small. And I tell you that because it is on us to make sure that that is how the government implements it. Yeah. And I'll be relying on all of you, the ACLU, um, NILC, who's a part of the litigation, IRAP, HIAS, we're all relying on you to help us figure out is that what's happening when people are getting their visas? If people are getting denied, are they, do they have bona fide relationships? When they come into the country, how is CBP, Customs and Border Patrol, deciding whether or not they come in? It's on us to make sure that we make sure that the government is abiding by the order. And the second thing I'll point out to you is, yes, the Supreme Court is going to hear this case, and they're going to hear it in October. And that is not an awful thing. That means the Supreme Court has the opportunity to shut down this discriminatory ban for once and for all. That's right. That's right. And so we need to make sure. The Fourth Circuit shut it down. They said there was religious animus. They said it was discrimination. The Ninth Circuit shut it down. We all know what this is. The president has made clear over and over again what this is. This is a ban on people based upon their faith. It is a violation of our Constitution, yeah. our laws, our values as a country, and we have to make sure that that doesn't move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manar, and thank you so much for the invaluable work that you and your colleagues at the ACLU are doing. Uh, so our next speaker, uh, great organization. So I'm visiting from the other Washington from Seattle, Washington. And just a few months back, we had a number of people, a large group, outside the 9th District Courthouse when the case was heard in front of that courthouse. A lot of people were out there in Richmond when the 4th Circuit heard this case. And we'll be back here in October. So I work at Oxfam, which is an international relief and development organization. We work in 90 countries around the world. We're a global movement of people working together to end the injustice of poverty. We work in more than 90 countries on issues that keep people poor, such as inequality, discrimination, and unequal access to resources. We help people save lives and disasters, build stronger futures for themselves, and to hold the powerful accountable. We will be filing an amicus brief in this Supreme Court case on President Trump's discriminatory Muslim and refugee travel ban in order to demonstrate the impact on refugees and on humanitarian relief work. I'm here today because, like you, I was devastated when I heard that President Trump planned to turn his back on decades of American tradition and enact his refugee and Muslim ban. I'm here today because, like you, I know that slamming our doors on some of the world's most vulnerable people won't make us any safer, but instead will harm tens of thousands of people in the midst of an unprecedented refugee crisis. Oxfam is working on the front lines of this crisis every day with people for whom this, this country's, our country's so settlement program is literally the difference between life 
and death. We cannot and will not allow this vital, life-saving program to be dismantled. So over the last few months, tens of thousands of us have rallied at airports around the country. We've fought these discriminatory bans in the courts, held vigils in front of the White House, and have talked to our friends and neighbors about refugees, about helping to fight the misinformation and the vetting process, and making sure people know the truth. And you know what? It's working. More and more Americans are standing up and saying, refugees are welcome here. And always will be. Yeah. Yes, sir. But we can't get complacent, and we can't give up. So after we head home tonight, let's all commit to three things. First, to keep marching, rallying, and protesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Second, to keep calling and writing our elected officials oh, yes. to keep our doors open to the world's refugees. Yeah. Let's do it. And in fact, I'm here this week because tomorrow, my colleagues and I have brought supporters from around the country. We'll be across the street at the Capitol talking with our elected officials about the value of our refugee resettlement program in this country and this, this discriminatory ban. And the third point is to keep spreading the word spreading facts and fighting all the misinformation out there. Together we are going to keep fighting because together we are sending the message to our leaders and to refugees around the world. Say it with me. No hate. No, no, hate. Hate. no fear. No fear. Refugees are welcome here. Refugees are welcome here. Thank you. No hate. No fear. Refugees are welcome here. No hate. No fear. Refugees are welcome here, no hate, 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 no fear. Refugees are welcome here. Thank you so much, John, and thank you so much to the work that Oxfam does on behalf of our most vulnerable populations on a daily basis, so thank you. Our next speaker is a great friend of, of, of ours, of FCNL and the faith community. Uh, please help me welcome Rabbi Jason Kimmelman Bloch from Bend the Ark Jewish Action. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My friends, we don't choose the historical circumstances in which we live, but we do get to choose how we respond. And it's precisely at times such as these when we discover who we truly are as a people, as a society, and as a nation. Targeting, threatening, banning a people based on their religious beliefs or their national origins remains fundamentally unjust and un-American. Yeah. It cuts to the heart of who we are as a country and the very values on which we were founded. We cannot let desperate politicians and would-be autocrats betray those values. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. I speak for Jewish Americans across the country who are in solidarity with our Muslim friends, neighbors, and family members, and all who are threatened by these hateful actions. We will fight together for what is right, and we will win. Yeah. 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 This is a time when we are desperately in need of a strong, independent judicial check on the power of this president with his radical, hateful agenda. We hope that the harmful decision by the Supreme Court to lift part of the injunction blocking the ban is not indicative of a final court ruling that will be handed down this fall. But the net effect is for, for those who are affected is that we will be turning away numerous individuals who are seeking a better life in this country. Some of them, as my grandparents did, some of them free, fleeing life-threatening violence. And that is a fundamental betrayal of our values as a nation. Yeah. While we await the judgment of the Supreme Court this fall, I have confidence that the judgment of history is already clear. Yeah. We know that future generations will look back on this episode as one of the most shameful chapters when this country betrayed its ideals. In many of those chapters, the judgment of the Supreme Court was no better. Japanese internment remains an American disgrace. 
one that Congress saw fit to apologize for and grant monetary reparations to the victims. And yet in 1944, the Korematsu decision, the Supreme Court upheld six to three that the order to place Japanese Americans into internment was indeed constitutional. We also know that the court can sometimes get things right and then overturn that and decide to do the right thing as they did when Brown versus Board overturned Plessy versus Ferguson. But the judgment of many Americans and of history has already been issued that this ban is immoral, bigoted, and against the very values of our Constitution. Yeah. We can only hope that this fall the Supreme Court will reach a similar conclusion. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Uh, our next speaker from the Center for American Progress, uh, Anisha Singh. Woo! Yeah. Hello, beautiful resistors. Well, here we are again. This will be my fourth Muslim ban rally in six months, and each time I start by saying, by shouting the same thing. I am a proud Sikh American and proud ally, friend, and activist for and with the American Muslim, the refugee, and the immigrant communities. Yeah. Being a person of color in Trump's America has meant feeling like we must defend ourselves from being the, from being the other, not just by our peers, but by our government, who we are supposed to entrust to hold our best interest. Our communities have gone through enough taking on the burden of actions of a few and enduring racism from our elected officials. Meanwhile, white supremacy is alive and well, receiving daily affirmation from the president. Even though we have had hundreds of homegrown white terrorists, we do not question the entire race's intentions and humanity. We know this ban does nothing to make America safer. It just makes America more afraid. Refugees are fleeing the same terrorism we condemn and already undergo comprehensive vetting. But fear-inducing rhetoric has led to a false narrative about what our values are as a nation, leading to the promotion of discrimination under the veil of national security. The burden falling on the American Muslim community and those perceived to be Muslim, perceived to be Muslim. With an uptick in hate crimes and profiling, families are on high alert in justified fear and sadness, whether, wondering whether their 17-year-old daughter can safely go to eat with her friends, or whether their husband will be shot on their driveway. We are faced with a time when we have to step up in ways we didn't before. For one, we are fighting a Congress who doesn't even understand the very idea that everyone deserves health care. Meanwhile, Jeff Sessions has taken over the Department of Justice, where their priority isn't providing justice when black bodies are left on the streets killed by the very people entrusted to serve and protect, but instead getting rid of sanctuary cities, protections we need when our Department of Homeland Security and its ICE agents are off raiding restaurant kitchens in Michigan to arrest those who look undocumented. What remains is our courts. All year, we saw the courts were our first line of defense, but it is clear in days like to get today why courts matter. We could be having a different conversation and our Muslim brothers and sisters wouldn't have to take another blow in, American, in the American story if a Supreme Court vacancy wasn't stolen from us for Neil Gorsuch. Yeah. They said he would be independent, but he only rubber stamped Trump's agenda in exchange for a lifetime seat on the most powerful court in the nation. And here's the thing, the courts can't save us if we don't save the courts. Our courts are going to see every single issue important to us in the next few years. So let's stop calling it our third branch of government. It is our first branch. It has been our first line of defense and our first ally in the resistance. Watch the courts and let's resist the hell out of this administration's nominees. And we all must be vigilant, speak up, show up, and stand up to defend humanity, compassion, and the sanctity of justice. When we dropped out of the climate agreement, we saw mayors and governors across the country light up their capitals green to resist climate change deniers. Similarly, we must light our hearts and fill our communities that are under attack with love and support because what's happening is not real America. Real America are the heroes in Portland who gave up their lives to fight for hate. Real America stands in front of me, lined up, fired up. We do not discriminate or spew hate out of fear. We rise up, we, we unite. 
I'm calling on all of you, allies, partners, Americans, who remember the values and compassion this nation stands for. Love deeper, call out bigotry and hate, resist, persist, and don't stop fighting. Thank you. Say loud, say clear, refugees are welcome here. Say loud, say clear, refugees are welcome here. Say loud, say clear, refugees are welcome here. Please help me welcome Joanne Lynn, who's the Senior Managing Director at Amnesty International USA. Friends, on behalf of Amnesty International and our more than one million members nationwide, we stand today with all of you, refugee rights groups, congregations of all faiths, Muslim and Arab communities, and civil rights groups across the country to remind President Trump and the courts that there is no place for hate in the United States of America. There is no place for discrimination in the U.S. of A. And there is no place for religious intolerance in our great country. Just last week, we, the world honored and commemorated World Refugee Day. 22.5 million refugees, half of them children, are running for their lives in search of protection. These are the highest numbers the world has ever seen. At a time when over 22 million refugees are fleeing for their lives, how can we, the United States of America, the world's wealthiest country, the world's sole superpower, how can we shut our doors to the most vulnerable in our midst? This is not who we are. We are better than this. Yes. When, em when Emma Lazarus wrote her famous 1883 sonnet that appears on the Statue of Liberty, did she write, give me your tired, your poor, but only those who happen to have a bona fide relationship with someone in the United States? <laughs> no, that is not what she wrote. Did Emma Lazarus write, give me your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, but only if they have a close family relationship in the United States? No. no! That is not what Lazarus wrote. Lazarus penned her auspicious poem and made clear that the Statue of Liberty and the USMA are a beacon of hope and freedom for all people worldwide. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. This is who we are, and this is what makes America great. Yes. Yeah. Friends, are we a country that allows our president to take a wrecking ball to the Statue of Liberty? No! no. no. Are we a country that condemns people based on the God that they worship, the language that they speak, or the color of their skin? No! no. Friends, we are a country that insists that all people, regardless of religion or nationality, must be treated fairly and with dignity. Here's our message from Amnesty International. One, to refugees around the world, Amnesty International renews our pledge to fight for your protection and your safe resettlement in the United States. We will not allow today's court decision to jeopardize your safety and well-being. Two, to investors, business people, exchange scholars, and tourists from the Arab and North Africa region, Amnesty International will fight to ensure that all of you with valid visas arrive safely at U.S. airports. Yeah. Three, to President Trump, from Amnesty International and our more than seven million members around the world, all of us watching you closely, history has its eyes on you, President Trump, we pledge that we will not rest until the gates of the U.S. of A. are reopened to all refugees and immigrants, regardless of religion or nationality. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, to all of you here today, our friends and supporters and compadres, 
to those of you around the country fighting to defeat this Muslim ban, here's our ask of you. Now is the time to contact your members of Congress and to tell them to intervene to stop this awful Muslim ban. Pull out your phones. Yes, all of you right now. I know most of you have them in your hand right now, so this will be an easy task. Send a text message to 21333. Let me repeat that. 21333 with the message amnesty. And you will be connected with your member of Congress and you will be given the opportunity to tell her or him to stem the tide of hate and intolerance and to reject this Muslim ban. Do your part today, spread the word, and join us in this fight to keep America's doors open to all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. When refugees are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When refugees are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Great. Our next speaker, Reverend Dr. Sharon Stanley Ray of Disciples of Christ. it is to be here together with no, those who know the real message of freedom. We know this city leads the country often over July 4th in celebrating what it means to be free, but in this year, in this year when tens of thousands are not feeling free at all, we need to practice now what our message will be for July 4th and beyond. Yeah. So say it with me, it's hate has no home here. 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 I encourage you to keep on practicing it. To keep on practicing it because our denomination and many others know that today's Supreme Court decision allowed only refugees with a bona fide relationship to the U.S. to enter. We want to say to our President, to our Congress, and especially to the Supreme Court, this message from faith communities that we do have a bona fide relationship with refugees and they have a bona fide relationship with us and that relationship comes through all of the sacred texts of our scriptures. Sacred texts that have messages like Leviticus 19.34 that calls us all to never forget that the foreigner who resides with you is to be treated as the native born yeah. among you. Yeah. Yes. And so with more refugees in the world now than ever before, I and our denomination stand together with those like you and remain steadfast that refugees should not be denied entrance based on their national or religious exclusion. Refugees should be welcomed generously in numbers of at least 75,000. How many? At least 75,000 this year and next year and in numbers even higher. Our ministries reaffirm and probably reaffirm that with many of you here that our U.S. refugee vetting process is a secure process. How many of you agree with that? Yes. It, yes. Is. it right. is. It is the most secure process, in fact, in the whole world. And it means that we can be confident always that those who step foot on this soil as refugees come not just a little bit vetted, but as the most deeply inspected and vetted of any individuals who arrive on our soil. And we yeah. must remind our courts and our congressmen and our president about that always. These are some of the reasons why we as disciples join together with many other denominations around the country and faith partners to submit an amicus brief to the court related to both of the cases, endeavoring to make sure 
that Trump's ban would not hold. We stand clear in upholding that still. We pray for the Supreme Court to hear our voices, to know how deeply disturbed we are by their decision today that suspends too many refugees from never having a chance to be welcomed by the very congregations who have been asking and seeking and stating their strongest desire to bring them in with open arms, to help them here to find a home, to make sure the hate and the trauma that they experienced will never be repeated. Let us continue to work on that goal together. Amen. Hate has no home here. 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 so much, Sharon. Our next speaker, Cheyenne Modaris from the National Iranian American Council. They've been doing phenomenal work in trying to push back and oppose these unconstitutional discriminatory executive orders. So please help me welcome Cheyenne. Yeah. Thank you. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Friends, today's Supreme Court decision was but a minor setback. We are committed, we are determined, and our resolve is stronger than ever. Yeah. We will continue to fight every single day. We will resist, we will speak out. We will file new lawsuits to uphold the Constitution. This is not insurmountable. The summer of 1964 marked the start of the Freedom Summer, which changed the course of the Civil Rights Movement. The giants who came before us, like Julian Bond and John Lewis, they gave us the blueprint. The summer of 2017 will go down as the new Freedom Summer. Yeah, yeah. that's right. This is the test of our generation. Over the next at least 90 days, we must, must forcefully repel and reject these ongoing attacks on American democracy and fundamental values. Yeah. We will be more engaged than ever. We will register voters. We will knock on doors. We yeah. will flood congressional phone lines. Yeah. Yeah. We yes. will protest. We will yes. resist every yeah. single day. will dismantle this Muslim ban and any other back doors that they decide to come up with. We will vote out elected officials who have remained silent in the face of these reprehensible attacks and have been in hiding. We must demand that they answer one simple question. Are you an ally or are you an accomplice? Hello. Are you an ally or are you an accomplice? We have to stick together. They want us to get tired. They want us to, to, to give up and throw all these different things at us. But this is our country, too. We're and we demand yes. equality. We're not going nowhere. That's right. yes. Yes. I personally am an Iranian American. I am a Muslim. I am living in a city. And I am just as American as any white Christian man living in Kentucky. Yes. Yes. Personally, I don't care how unpopular that idea is in certain circles. We're not going nowhere. Yeah. So friends, let's continue to fight back. This is an opportunity, a minor setback, and we will continue to resist and we will continue to fight back because yeah. America is no place for a Muslim ban. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Cheyenne. Our next speaker, Reverend Jimmy Hawkins from the Presbyterian Office of Public Witness. I stand here on behalf of the Presbyterian Church USA to say that we are in opposition to this ban. We are all gathered here today to protest in the strongest words possible the decision of the Supreme Court today to ban entry from foreign nationals who cannot make a, quote, bona fide relationship with a person or entity in the United States. This ban is immoral, 
unkind, and for the first and only time that I will quote President Trump, just plain me. <laughs> for my part, I came here today to say that if refugees from Somalia, Iran, Yemen, Egypt, Sudan, and Syria want to come to this country, and all they need is for someone to vouch for them, that we are here today to vouch for them. Yes. And we, all, we all have a brother in Egypt that we're willing to vouch for, a mother in Yemen that we're willing to vouch for, a son in Somalia that we're willing to vouch for. We have friends in Iran that we're willing to vouch for, a father in Sudan and a sister in Syria. Why, you must ask, why do we oppose this ban? It's plain discrimination based on the God that you pray for to, based on the color of your skin. It's reprehensible. It's threatening. People who are no threat, people who want to come here not to inflict violence, but to experience peace. It's not who we are as a nation, and it's what, not what the American people want. And we as a nation, have we not learned that bans just don't work? In 1859, when Oregon was instituted as a state, it banned African Americans from coming there, from owning property. And it was not until 1926 that blacks could move to the state of Oregon. In 1942, as it has been stated, there was a ban against Japanese Americans being free. And until 1954, there was a ban against black children and white children going to school together. And until 1967, two dozen states had a ban on interracial marriage between blacks and whites. If this ban was not overturned in 1967, we would not have had the 44th president of the United States, Ooh. Barack Obama, to be president Ooh. of this country. Now, bans don't work. But we all got to admit that there are some bans we stand in support of. We need to ban racial profiling. Yeah. Right. We need to ban yeah. sexual violence yes, and putting your hands where they don't belong. Yes. We need to ban police shootings of black men. Yes, sir. We need to yeah. ban LGBTQ discrimination. Yes, yeah. We need to ban midnight tweets. Yeah. Yeah. And let us be sure the fight is not over. For in October, the court will determine whether this ban is constitutional or not. And let us not lose hope today because the Supreme Court has not finished speaking yet, and it has a history of overturning unjust bans. Oh, yes. Just in 1954, do you remember Brown versus the yes. Board of Education? Yep. Do you remember back in 1967 when it overturned the ban against interracial marriage? Let us remember that in 2016, the Supreme Court spoke and overturned the ban on same-sex marriage. So we shall be back in oh, October. Yes. We No ban, no war, sanctuary for all. 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 All right, so one of the most important things in all movements, I think you all know, is art and music, right? Yeah. And I feel like we need a little music yeah. in this rally. Do y'all want some music? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we have a singer, songwriter, Nina Marie Fernando, who will offer her gift of music for us today. So as you heard the words of Emma Lazarus as inscribed on the Statue of Liberty, the symbol of welcome in this country, Sorry, uh, the, Sorry. The, the melody uh, of this song is written by Irving Berlin. His family, he's a composer here in this country, his family uh, immigrated uh, to this country when the Jewish community was being persecuted. So, so hear us sing, join me in song. Give me your tired and your poor, your huddled masses yearning to break free, the wretched recluse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. We ask that Supreme Court hear us, hear these values. I'll sing it one more time and join me if you can. Give me your tired, your poor, 
Your huddled mass is yearning to break free The wretched recluse of your teeming shore Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me I lift my lamp beside the golden door Amen. Amen. Great. Thank you so much, Nina. Uh, so our next speaker uh, is Jason Miller from the Franciscan Action Network. Thank you so much, Jason, for being here. That is a really hard act to follow, but I'm glad I didn't have to follow Jimmy at the very least. So, hi, I am Jason Miller, the Director of Campaigns and Development with the Franciscan Action Network. We represent about 50 different Franciscan institutions nationwide here on Capitol Hill. Has anybody ever heard of St. Francis? Have heard of that guy? He's that, he talks to the animals and preaches to the birds. But he did other things too. St. Francis, during the Crusades, he reached out for peace. He reached out to the Sultan during the Crusades. And rather than trying to go along with the Crusaders and fight in a war, he said, we need to have peace and dialogue and understanding. And that's the way that we try to live out today our Franciscan values. Has anybody heard of Pope Francis? Yeah. 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 So he was smart. He took the name of St. Francis. But he not only talks the talk, like St. Francis, he walks the walk. Yes. The first trip that he took as Pope was to where? To Lampedusa, the island that houses many refugees. But not only did he visit them, he said, I want to have Syrian Muslim refugee families come with me to the Vatican. There are Syrian refugee families that live in the Vatican, thanks to Pope Francis. Yes. So not only does Pope Francis talk the talk, he walks the walk. And I'm here to say today, I don't want to just talk the talk, I want to walk the walk. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know what a bona fide relationship is, but I'm here to say, I want to walk the walk. If you're a refugee and you've been vetted, vetted for up to two years, then I will welcome you. You are my bona fide relationship. The Muslim ban is unchristian, it's un-American, and we cannot stand for it. Thank you. No hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. No hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here, 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 no hate, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. Great, thank you so much, Jason. Our next speaker from the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, please help me welcome Yusuf Barzinci. Hi everybody. So today's decision about the Supreme Court represents the dismissal of the real injury caused on in our communities by the baseless attacks on Arabs and Muslims. Here at EDC, we condemn the decision that, uh, that only reaffirms that we are not all equal under the law, and justice continues to be afforded to only a few. We cannot help but recognize that this, is a, this decision comes only after a few days where the Supreme Court denied co constitutional and federal rights of Arabs and Muslims who were profiled and unlawfully detained and then tortured, tortured following 9-11 to seek justice against the government. These attacks against our community do not happen in a vacuum. We must continue to fight for justice. We must continue to hold our government accountable for its discriminatory actions. At ADC, we're ready to partner with, and we have already partnered for that matter, but plenty of other organizations, most of them uh, represented here, and also some that are not, and we're ready to fight against um, this kind of discrimination across all of our communities, whether it be the LGBT community, our community, the Latino community, we're willing to stand up against this sort of hate. Um, we need your help, and uh, you know, in these coming weeks and months, we're, we're putting on these citizenship workshops, and we're, we're uh, preparing some toolkits for uh, people coming from these countries that are being affected by the ban that can hopefully, as hopefully assist in these um, sort of procedures. So uh, again, uh, you know, we hope that we can stand with you guys and we continue the fight. And uh, no ban, no wall, no raids, and um, 
hopefully we can all stand together and we can make a difference. Yes. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Yusuf, and thank you to all the work that you and your colleagues at ADC are doing. Our final two speakers, uh, please help me welcome from uh, the United Methodist Church, Reverend Jania Ree Moore and Austin Wall. As Yasmin mentioned, my name is Jeannie Rimor. I am the Director of Civil and Human Rights with the General Board of Church and Society of the United Methodist Church. We are here, and we have been here for almost 100 years in that building, the United Methodist Building across the street, because we believe that the faith community has an important voice in the public square every day and especially on days like today. The United Methodist Church stands in solidarity with refugees, stands against racism and against Islamophobia, and stands for the full embrace of the religious freedom of all people. As Christians, we recognize the biblical and theological injunctions to this stance. Jesus' life begins as a refugee to Africa, escaping Herod's infanticide with his family. Throughout the Bible, God explicitly calls on us to welcome the stranger and the sojourner. Yes, and not only those that we have a bona fide attachment to, but those that we do not, especially those that we do not, those who are fully strangers. First Timothy tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Yes. United Methodists around the world are loving their neighbors by welcoming refugees into their congregations and their communities and standing for, for justice. I'm going to ask those wearing the red shirts to join with me at the podium up here. Just get a little closer. Today I am joined up here and out there by United Methodist young adults who came to Washington DC this week to advocate on this very reality. They did not know this morning when they woke up that they would be here today standing with me, but they are, and you will hear from one just now. Let me introduce Austin Wall. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm here speaking because of my convictions as a United Methodist and person of faith, which means that I believe in the shared value of all people and their dignity as members of the family of God. To not speak against today's decision by the Supreme Court would to be to act in complicity with injustice and complicity to sin. I came to Washington, D.C. from my family's cattle farm in Cumberland Furnace, Tennessee, to stand in solidarity with my neighbors, peers, and loved ones who will be negatively affected by today's decision. As followers of Christ, we are called to have radical love for our neighbor. And this decision is in direct opposition to the life and the teaching of our guide, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. That's right. That's right. As United Methodist, we stand with people of faith and goodwill to resist attempts to dehumanize our neighbors out of fear of the other. And so join me in our endless refrain. When refugees are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, my back! May it be so. Uh, Austin and um, Reverend Jania. So uh, uh, we have one final speaker, actually. Uh, my apologies. So please help me welcome Sasha Butchard from Lambda Legal. Thanks, everybody. I'm Sasha Butchard from Lambda Legal. We're a national uh, LGBT civil rights organization. Uh, I wasn't expecting to do this, but can I get a we object for the executive order? We object! One more? We object! One for Trump? We, we object! Thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, so let me just start, before I begin, just jumping in, that I just want to say really clearly that um, many, many, many LGBT, LGBT people are Muslim people. Many, many people. Uh, but even if that weren't the case here today, we, we would still be here standing arm in arm in solidarity with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, there is no such thing as us and them, it's just all us. And uh, whenever Trump comes for any of us, we have to stand together and unite. Um, we wish that the Supreme Court decision had come out better today, but we're confident that justice will prevail. This kind of bigotry has no place under the law. We treat all people equally under the law. 
and we and we live up to our highest values when we stand united against hate and fear. So thank you for coming today. so much Sasha thank you to all of you for joining us today thank you for our partners and allies please leave today energized focused making sure that anytime we see any discriminatory policy coming from this administration that we rise up we speak up we speak out we continue to resist if it means we need to be out on the streets every single day so i know that my colleague joanne from amnesty gave you one number to text or to to put in your phone i'm going to give you another number i want you to have this phone number in your cell phones to call every single day to tell your members of Congress to rescind this unconstitutional Muslim and refugee ban. Yeah. Ready for the number? 202-224-3121. That's the capital switchboard. 202-224-3121. Your members and your senators they need to hear from you every day, letting them know that you welcome refugees in your communities, that you welcome immigrants in your communities, yes. that you don't support yeah. these discriminatory and hateful policies that divide and target our, our neighbors and friends and colleagues, that you're not going to put up with it. It's because of you that we've been able to be successful in the courts, and we are confident that come October, the Supreme Court is going to call this ban what it is, and it is an unconstitutional Muslim ban. Yes. So thank you so much for everything you're doing, and let's keep fighting.